What's up everyone, it's AJ LaPrey and today we have a highly requested video about my D1 story. So we're gonna talk all about how I got recruited in high school and what it was like playing at three different colleges at the D1 level. Now it was always my goal to be the best basketball player I could possibly be. I wasn't worried about what other people were doing and what accolades they were reaching, but I always wanted to be the best I could be. And I knew if I did that, I could play at the highest level. I think this video will help a lot of you guys understand where I came from, what I did to get to the D1 level and what it was like playing at those schools. I played first at the University of Oregon, then I went to Pepperdine University where I graduated, then I went to Rice University to go to grad school and play there. But let's take it back to kind of where it all started. I've always loved basketball. Some of my earliest memories are playing basketball and, and doing new tricks and being so excited about them. I remember the first time I dribbled between my legs. I thought it was the coolest thing ever and just kind of progressed, kept progressing. And I kept progressing and I always wanted to be the best basketball player that I could possibly be. And that was something really important to focus on. It's difficult to not compare yourself to other people, but at the end of the day, you're your own person. You can't focus on what some other person's doing. I mean, there's only so many LeBrons and Zion Williamsons out there to where I'm not gonna compare myself to LeBron or Zion or Giannis Antetokounmpo, any of those guys, cause that's not realistic. That's not who I am. And I grew up focusing on the player I am and the player I wanna be. Of course, I try to emulate some other people's games and use some of their best aspects to make me better. But at the end of the day, you have to mold yourself into being the best basketball player you wanna be. And I kind I want to take you guys through how I did that and how I got to the D1 level and I think this would be a pretty fun video to talk about. So let's take it to my sophomore year of high school. It was kind of a breakout season for me and the pivotal moment is when we got to the playoffs I had a 40 point game as a sophomore in the playoffs and it was actually pretty wild because I only had nine points in the first half and I ended up scoring 31 in the second half, 25 in the fourth quarter so it was kind of a crazy game but after that game is when I picked up my first college offer. It wasn't from a D1 school, it was from a pretty small local school, but I still thought it was the coolest thing ever. And it was always my dream to play high level basketball and get my college paid for through playing basketball and through all the hard work that I put in for basketball. So at this moment, it was kind of like a relief, but at the same time, maybe work harder because I wanted more. I wanted to play at the highest level and being the best player that I could be, I know I knew I could push myself to that with my, my work ethic and all the effort and energy I was gonna put into it, I was gonna make sure it happened. And I kind of just dug my heels down. And after that, that was our last game of the season. After that, I started working crazy hard. And then going into summer basketball, I ended up breaking my ankle in a game. I went up for a dunk, but on the way up, I stepped on someone's foot and cracked. It wasn't even my ankle, technically it was my leg. It was like the lower part of my fibula. So I just cracked it all clean all the way through. And this was just a nightmare. And this is kind of where the ups and downs definitely were starting. Cause I was taking basketball so serious. I didn't want to ruin anything with getting injured. And then this came along and it sucked. Kind of dug down into that deep hole and I was upset. It was the worst summer ever. And I started working harder to get better and better and get that ankle even better. And I started playing the best basketball in my life. I was feeling great. All that rehab from getting hurt made me even more athletic than I was before, made me even stronger. So going into my junior year, I didn't really have too many looks from colleges. It kind of got put on hold from getting injured. Then I had an even better junior season. But in Oregon, it's kind of hard to get recruited. I mean, there were definitely some schools from the West Coast out there. Uh, I remember seeing Pepperdine at some of those games. I remember seeing some of those smaller level division one schools. A lot of schools from the West Coast Conference were at my games junior year, but we had to be playing like really good teams for any other schools to be there because they wanted to look at other players there at the same time. They weren't really just coming just for me quite yet. After the season is when things started to really pick up. When I hopped into my AAU team, I started to play a lot of tournaments on the East Coast and really got some good exposure to play in front of a lot of colleges. This is when things started to pick up. Playing at these tournaments, there were all sorts of head coaches in the gym. I mean, there were coaches from USC, UCLA, Oregon, Oregon State, Georgetown, Florida, Texas, Yukon. All these big schools were out watching me play. That spring and summer of playing AAU basketball was one of the most fun times of my life. I ended up playing pretty well this summer and our team won a lot of tournaments. And I remember getting 
my first Division I offer. And my first offer came from Greg Foster, who was coaching at UTEP at the time. Greg Foster used to play in the NBA, so I mean, had this ex-NBA player calling me up, telling me that they want me to come to their school. That was one of the greatest feelings ever. I couldn't believe it, it was so surreal. It being a Division I school, I was like, oh my gosh, this is it. I finally cracked in to start reaching one of my goals of playing Division I basketball, and it felt so great. And after that summer, I got offers from all sorts of schools all over the nation and took all sorts of other visits all around the nation. I took visits to Virginia, Maryland, Oregon, Oregon State, Pepperdine, Utah, George Mason. And actually just a little bit ago, I was trying to count how many scholarship offers I got after my junior season. And I just went through my phone and all my contacts, all these old head coaches, and it was over 50 offers. The majority of the Pac-12, majority of the WCC, some random schools on the East Coast, some other little schools like James Madison, Tulane, Toledo. But there were a lot of big schools in there. Obviously, University of Oregon is where I ended up going. I committed to University of Oregon the start of my senior year, and it was one of the most amazing feelings ever. I finally completed one of my life goals that I've, I've been working for since I was just a little kid. But after committing to Oregon came one of those lows where at the start of my senior season, I sprained one of my ankles, and then I came back a few weeks later, sprained another ankle. I came back from that, then I got food poisoning. I only ended up playing like five, somewhere from five to eight games, I think, my senior year, and I was never healthy. So it was kind of like a downer of a season. Your senior season is supposed to be the best one ever, you know, go out on a high note, but it really wasn't, and it kind of fueled my fire to get even better and better. So that spring put in so much work. And I live pretty close to University of Oregon, so I was driving up there, playing with those guys as much as I could in the spring. Then I got there in the summer, and things were great. I was meshing well with the guys, playing with and against NBA guys on that team. I mean, Joe Young played for the Pacers, Damian Dotson plays for the Knicks right now, and all those other guys are still playing pro elsewhere. But it was like September, October of that season, I ended up tearing my labrum in my hip. It was just a freak accident. I stole a ball on the passing lane and I twisted the wrong way and all of a sudden my hip snapped and I couldn't even lift my leg up. It was the craziest thing I had been through. I mean, there were times where I was having to pick my leg up like with my pants. I couldn't lift it up. I couldn't lift it up, put my socks and shoes on. So I knew something serious was up. And after that, I could never really get healthy and I would try to work back and work back to it and I would just hurt it again. University of Oregon didn't really help me the way I wanted to be helped when I was going through that injury and I ended up transferring. So we can make another video a different day talking about what, talking about the University of Oregon situation. So we'll just move on past that right now. But I ended up transferring to Pepperdine where I absolutely loved it. Those guys were some of the first people to recruit me and the whole coaching staff was still there. I ended up going to Pepperdine and things were great on that high, on that high. And then two weeks into summer workouts, tear my labrum again on my hip, have to get surgery this time. So I ended up getting surgery a couple weeks later. Eight months or so after that, I finally get back into playing shape, but just never really felt like myself. I only felt like I was playing about somewhere from 60 to 75% of my, my capability, you know? We're at the Madison Square Garden playing where the Knicks play. And I was guarding this guy in Madison Square Garden, I'm looking around, it's, we're playing against Richmond, an East Coast school. So there's a lot of people there. The next game was like Nebraska versus West Virginia. So people are piling in. It's, it's a crazy atmosphere, a crazy college atmosphere in Madison Square Garden. And I'm guarding this guy and I'm trying to play like tough defense on him. And all of a sudden he jabs left, goes right. So I had to push off my right leg to get to stay in front of him and I couldn't. My right leg just gave out on me and that was my hip getting hurt again. And I was just completely blown away. I ended up trying to rehab it back, trying to rehab it back and it never healed. So a handful of months later, I get surgery again in August and same thing, come back from that, never feeling the same, never feeling that great. And from all the wear and tear and playing on it, I was developing such awful pain in my hip to where there was a stretch where I didn't sleep for four days straight. This was kind of making me go crazy. I couldn't believe the pain I was in. I wasn't sleeping at all. So I go to the doctor and I'm like, hey man, uh, something's up with my hip. I can't sleep, I'm in awful pain. And the doctor essentially shuts me down. He says, you, you can't play basketball again. You can't run again. You can't do any of the things that I pretty much love doing is just being active, playing basketball, running around, doing all this. And the doctor just took it from me. I'm blown away. I don't really know how to react because 
all I want to do is play basketball, but at the same time, I'm in so much pain. So I'm trying to be understanding of what he's saying. And he medically retires me. I have to medically retire from playing basketball. And that was one of the hardest moments in my life. I did not know what to do with myself. I've been playing basketball my entire life. I didn't know how to really act day to day. I didn't know what to do in my meantime. And I ended up taking nine months off in that nine months once again, highs and lows, like, like a roller coaster ride. And I tried to take the positives from that time. I mean, I couldn't run. I couldn't jog. I couldn't jump. I couldn't do any of that stuff. So to stay active and to get in good shape, I learned how to surf. So that was one of the positives from this. But the majority of everything was lows. I would be surfing for like anywhere from four to eight hours a day just trying to stay in shape and trying to stay active. I loved surfing, I loved it, but it wasn't basketball. Being a professional surfer wasn't one of my life goals. Being a professional basketball player was one of my life goals. So after nine months of not being able to jog, not being able to jump, I quietly started to do my own rehab and training and I ended up getting healthy enough to shoot around, run around, play basketball. And I went back to the doctor, I was like, listen, I've done everything to get back to this point. My hip is feeling great. I took the nine months off, took another two months to rehab and train to get back in shape to where I could actually run again. And he said, yeah, you just needed that time off to let your body relax because your body was killing your hip. And then he cleared me. He's like, yeah, you can play again. But at this time I couldn't go back to play for Pepperdine because I had medically retired. So I had to graduate and transferred to a different school. My playing days at Pepperdine were riddled with injuries, but still had a lot of opportunity to, to play in some huge games. Played against Gonzaga, BYU, St. Mary's, all these big schools. Those guys on my team were amazing. I love them all to death. Pepperdine was an awesome experience, and I wish I could have gone back and played for them and given them my all. Healthy AJ, that's how I felt my entire time in college, my first really four years of college. I was never 100% and that kind of killed me and it was just a constant battle to try to get healthy, trying to play and I could still play pretty well at 75%. I was still starting some games at Pepperdine, but I was never the player I wanted to be, someone that's really impacting the game heavily. I always wanted to help my team the most in any possible way, and that's how I felt. I couldn't really help my team as much as I wanted to. This is where things kinda, kinda got, got cool, and this is where you guys started to hop in. I started to make these videos to get recruited again. I started to put up my workouts on YouTube and on Instagram, and they started to gain traction. All of a sudden these college coaches were calling and one of them recruited me in high school at uh, Arizona State. His name's Scott Parrott and he was the head coach at Rice University at this time. And at Arizona State he coached James Harden. He actually coached James Harden in high school too. I had a really good relationship with Coach P and he gave me the opportunity to come out to Rice University and go to grad school and play basketball there for my final year of basketball. So I get out to Houston and I'm loving it. There's an, it's just an amazing group of people, great coaching staff. Good energy in Houston, sense of community is incredible. And then Hurricane Harvey hits, and I've never been through a storm like that. I ended up staying with one of my teammates and they took great care of me. It, but it was a really scary, scary experience for everyone in Houston. And we ended up raising about $160,000 for the City of Houston Hurricane Harvey Flood Relief Fund. And this was like in my first month being in Houston, but fast forward to season, I'm finally playing the best basketball of my life, playing how I want, I'm starting in games, averaging about 12 points a game, shooting like 50% from three, and we got to play in some huge games. We played in Las Vegas at T-Mobile Arena, and it was an outstanding experience. It was just a really a, a different time being in the South. I'd never been out there, and we were traveling all around to these different states that I had never even thought of being to. So it was a really cool experience, and then, our seventh game of the season, I landed on my head in a game and got an awful concussion to where I don't remember about three or four months after that time period. I can remember just little glimpses of things here and there. For the most part, it's all lost memory. But I was actually playing really well in this game too. I had three threes in the first half and was feeling pretty good. So I was on a high and then I land, hit my head and everything just crashes down after that and it was such an awful experience. I couldn't read, I couldn't write. And at this time I was so confused, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to be out on the court, I wanted to play basketball, but 
I was just so scared to be out there. I didn't want to get hit again. I, I everything was slow. Every, I felt like I was a step behind. I was scared when the ball would come at me because I couldn't see it right. I played in three or four games after this and I don't remember playing in a single one. I went on several road trips with the team. I don't remember any of them. All I remember is one of the bus rides when my headache was the worst ever. So after this, I had to withdraw from school because I couldn't go to any of my classes. It happened during finals week, of course, of all the weeks. So I couldn't finish any of my classes. So this is kind of where my D1 journey ends. I started out at University of Oregon, went to Pepperdine University where I graduated. Then I ended up in Houston, Texas at Rice University. All in all, there were plenty of highs and lows and I cherished and loved my D1 experience. Of course, I wish things were different. I wish I could have stayed healthier, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles and it really has taught me how to roll with the punches. And I feel like I've been through so much adversity that's just only made me stronger. And so out of it, my, my D1 journey end, but when I started making these videos at Pepperdine, I saw it as a light of positivity, but then I had to put it on hold once I went to Rice University because there's just, it's impossible to juggle school, basketball, and the consistent uploading schedule. So. I would upload sporadically and every, every once in a while. You all have been so supportive through all my ups and downs. No matter what, I'm always getting support from you guys and I appreciate that from the bottom of my heart. Right now we are at 77,000 subscribers and I thank each and every one of you. My goal is to get to 100,000 subscribers by May. And I set that goal in November when I only had about 30,000 subscribers. So my basketball, career and journey has started with setting goals of being a D1 player, a professional basketball player. And when basketball was taken away from me from all my injuries, I, I started to hate basketball. I didn't want to play. I didn't want anything to do with it. And then when I started these videos up again, that really brought a positive light into my attitude and just a new fun way to play basketball again, a new way to immerse myself back into basketball culture and get involved and just really playing again. I wasn't playing after my injury. I didn't do anything for about eight to nine months after my concussion is finally when I picked the basketball up again and started started playing. So this YouTube channel has been a positive outlet for me to play basketball again and I appreciate everyone. Thank you all for coming through and listening to my D1 story. I know it was long and I know there were lots of highs and lows, a roller coaster ride, but that's just kind of what it is and that's what life gives you. So battle through all the adversity and all the difficult times and you'll come out stronger. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like it. If you wanna see more, subscribe. Feel free to comment down below. I read all the comments and I try to get back to everyone. I wanna spread positivity on this channel. I want this to be a place where everyone can shut off all the negative out there and enjoy themselves for however long you watch these videos. So once again, thank you all from the bottom of my heart and we'll catch you guys next time. Peace.